Welcome to Chatterbooks, episode three. Chatterbooks is here to introduce you to independent British authors and books, to help you find the real gems in the huge amount of small press and self-published books that are available. This episode, I'm pleased to introduce you to a great novel published last year, The Line in the Sand by Sola Odemoyiwa. This is the blurb from the back of the book. Jane and Whale Verity and their 12-year-old daughter Dele meet Sandman, a local fixer after a military coup in Roko, West Africa. In revenge for Jane's colonial past, Sandman frames Whale for murder. He kills Jane and rapes Dele. Ten years later, Dele is a medical student yearning for revenge, but Sandman is now a member of the ruthless junta, untouchable. Dele meets the cantankerous Mrs. Lagbadger and learns that Confucius, Mrs. Lagbadger's prized African grey parrot, has somehow acquired a profane vocabulary. Then Sandman raids Mrs. Lagbadger's house and removes the precious bird. In Roku, harming an African grey parrot is a capital offence. Intrigued by Sandman's rash actions, Dele suspects he has a dark secret. Can Dele expose the nefarious Sandman, or will her quest for retribution claim her too? This is an extract from Chapter 1. Dele Verity snapped her sticky eyes wide open in terror, heard her dad's gentle snoring next door, and puffed her cheeks out in relief. Phew, only another bad dream. But the really, really sick news is, we're still here. Separated from her parents' bedroom by white plasterboard, and no larger than the shoe cupboard Mum had in Zidonia, her bedroom opened up onto the front room. She sat up, in a bed so tiny Dad called it a crib, leaned away from the sloping ceiling, fetched a two-plug extension with a sleepy foot, and stamped. The pilot light flickered on, and the standing fan in the corner grumbled into life lifting grey buds of dust off the rusty cage. But before Dele could settle into the breeze, the wagging tails on the balls of fluff flopped back down and the fan wheezed to a halt. Electric people! God will punish you! Oh! She heard a woman shout from the back street. A parrot retweeted the woman's cry. Shut up, you, or I'll screw your beak off, said Dele with a wry chuckle. She knew it was not yet half past five, because Eddie, the civil servant's smelly bath suds, had not gurgled through the shallow gutter running under her bed. A snort came from next door, then a cough, and the sound of Dad's shuffling feet. But Dele didn't want him to come with her today. She was a big girl now. She put on her dressing gown. Her door creaked as she prized it open. She crept across the front room, eased her new yellow bucket out from under the sink, and opened the front door. It opened straight out onto the street, and the rotting rubbish tips gave the cloying morning a smell like bad breath. In the dim light, Dele could just make out the ghostly Mazine in his white gown with his white megaphone in hand as he rattled open the corrugated doors to the mosque. She knew she had to hurry, because the man's calls to his faithful and Pastor Callista's plaintive prayers in response would soon get many out of their beds. So wedging her feet further into her slippers, she leapt off the sandbags Dad had laid against the floods and skipped down the street, using the bricks wedged in the ground as stepping stones. But, to her dismay, Little Mama had beaten her to the standpipe. Little Mama was said to be 15, but she looked about nine, and she loved a sales passer. Dele turned away and waited out of range, but little mama wouldn't be denied. She walked up to Dele. Do you want tea? Green tea? Chamomile? Iroko? Palm wine tea? Or a coffee with cow's milk? Tinned milk? Do you take sugar? She said. I don't want a drink, said Dele. Then can I offer you our marine selection? Fried fish? Said little mama, raising a fork to her mouth in pantomime. Have you got shark? Said Dele. That'll shut her up. Little mama looked over her shoulder and at the ditch. I think so, she said. No, I I mean whale, said Dele. Little Mama shook her head. Don't bother. Maybe tomorrow, said Dele. 
Little Mama looked disappointed to have let down her client. She went quiet and her face dropped. Dele felt guilty. She turned away from Little Mama and watched the bucket fill. When the water shimmered and tinkled to the brim at last, It's full, said Dele, and gave Little Mama a gentle nudge. Don't worry, I'll have whale next time, said Little Mama. She rolled an old vest into a cushion for her head, and, without a slop, heaved the bucket up onto the pad and made her jaunty way back down the street. Relieved that there was no one else in sight, Dele placed her plastic bucket under the trickling tap, so the water didn't drum into its base but ran down the sides. The water had barely covered the bottom of the bucket when Sandman's unmistakable silhouette appeared outside his doorway halfway up the street. Most people called him Sandman, but only behind his back. Some said he got the name because his gowns and fez made him look like a desert dweller. Kasiri, Dele's new best friend, said it was because the way his head and neck jerked forward when he walked made him look like a chicken pecking at sand. Dele's dad, Whale, said the name suited him because the man was always hatching or laying a plot. With a short chewing stick hanging from his thin lips and a silver bucket in his left hand, Sandman loomed to within spitting distance of Dele. Hey, Yimbo girl, your time's up. Some of us have important things to do, he said. Everything about Sandman, his squeaky voice, long neck, the shifty eyes placed almost on the side of his narrow, long face, as if made from a mask too big for him, or as though the eyes couldn't stand each other, made Dele cringe. My five minutes at the tap take me to this scratch Dad made here with a blade, she said, tipping the bucket towards Sandman. Sandman didn't even bother to look. Which stupid line? Here, you and your mama think you're the only people in this planet, he said. He pushed Dele on the shoulder, spinning her round, and she slipped on the slimy concrete surround. Sandman laughed, emptied Dele's bucket into his, and tossed hers into the bush. Dele seethed with impotent fury, but Mum would go volcanic if she lost that new bucket. So watching out for broken glass, and snakes, and rats, and careful not to lose her slippers, she squelched into the swamp to look for the bucket. She found it, lying, dented, on a pool of stinking water in the hollow of a fallen tree trunk. As she turned for the standpipe, who should she see but her dad striding down the street looking like a bare-knuckle prize fighter? A white shirt billowed behind his bare chest, and he had his fist and jaws clenched. Dele flew out of the swamp to meet him. I saw that, said Whale, emptying Sandman's bucket into Dele's. Do you know who I am? said Sandman. You think you can diss me? I'll show you that we are not the same in this Sankara city, he said, pounding his chest. Go on then. Tell me. Those filthy bottles of piss you peddle can cure cancer, diabetes, depression. So how come you live on this Nigeria street with the rest of us? said Whale. Sandman's eyes narrowed to angry slits. He jabbed three fingers in the air, folding each in turn. This is how I will break your family. One by one like matchsticks. You, your color whore, and your bastard child. One by one, you watch me. You will see. Fear clawed at Dele's chest. Don't listen to him, said Whale, taking his daughter's bucket in one hand and her hand in the other. The man's a non-entity. He can't hurt you. Let's get you ready for school. If you want to read more of this great novel, then go to http colon slash slash www.john-d-scotcher.co.uk forward slash chatterbooks. There you'll find details of how you can buy the book. Next time, I'll be reading from the Serial Data's shopping list, Chick Lit by Morgan Bailey. I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>